challenge, uh, this one is a level seven. We're doing it in Python and it's called birthday one cake. Um, so as always, a link to the challenge will be in the show notes right below the video if you want to try it out before watching the video. And then you can always come back here and, and uh, watch the solution. Uh, another thing I'm going to do for these videos as well is I'm going to start opening up a brand new scratch notebook uh, in Jupyter so that we can kind of play around with some of the stuff that uh, you're, I'm doing in the function so you can have a better visual understanding of, of what's going on there. So here's the challenge. Uh, it's your birthday and you're going to be given a function uh, that is your cake and it's going to have the number of candles uh, for your age. And so they're, they're mentioning here that that number can be up to a thousand. Okay. So then what's going to happen is somebody's going to jump out of that cake and the candles are going to go flying everywhere. Okay. So what's going to happen is some of the candles are in this debris. So you have to use this debris to count up the candles. Okay. Now it's kind of interesting how the debris works. It's basically a string of characters. Okay. And so if you read the instructions, what it says is the even indexed characters, uh, you're going to get the ASCII code for those. So A is index zero. So we would get the ASCII code, which is 97. C is index of two. That's even. So we would get 99 for the ASCII code. Okay. So that's the even index characters. The odd index characters, what you're going to do is get its position in the alphabet. So B is the second letter in the alphabet. Okay. And that's for all odd indexed characters. So this is index one in the string. Okay. So as you can see here, we add 97 plus two plus 99. That would be the total number of candles that fell on the floor. Okay. So then the final part is if the total number of candles on the floor is greater than 70% of your original number of birthday candles, then the, the house is on fire. So you would return the string fire. Otherwise, uh, you're going to say that was close. Okay. So let's do this. What I'm going to do is grab uh, some of the tests that they're doing here. So we'll grab this first one here. We'll grab the 900, which is the candles, and then we'll have the string A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll bring these over here and I'll say candles comma debris is equal to both of those values. Okay. I want to use the same variable names as the parameter in the function so that we can just start copy and pasting code over to that function and get a quick solution here. Okay. All right. So the debris is a string and strings are basically like lists of characters in Python. And so just like lists, we can index into them. Okay. So what I can do here is I can say, all right, start at zero and go all the way to the end. Right. So no surprise there. It's the entire string. Okay. So in Python, there's another way to uh, inc inc implement a skip. Right. So what you can do is if you throw another colon into the uh, index here, and specify the skip value. So I want to skip every other one. Uh, then you will get back all the even characters here. So you notice here's the original string debris, uh, and I've got uh, all six characters there. And so these are the even ones, right? So that's the index zero, and then C is index two, and E is index four. Okay. So those are my evens. We'll say evens is equal to that. Okay. So the odds is similar concept here. Only this time we start at index one, go all the way to the end, skip every other one. So those are the odd characters. Okay. So we'll say these as odds. All right. So far, so good. So now what we need to do is uh, let's tackle the evens first because that's kind of the easiest one. Okay. So what we need to do is we're going to use list comprehension. We're going to go letter for letter in evens. So we're using list comprehension to basically look at each letter. And now we need to get the ASCII code for each of these letters. So if you do some quick Googling and you'll go Python string ASCII character or something like that. And what'll happen is you'll find the function ORD shows up in one of the earlier results. Okay. So ORD will give you the ASCII character or the ASCII code for any given character passed into the function. So these are the ASCII codes for the even letters. Okay. So if you add that up, we can take this list of numbers. I'm going to cut it out, call sum, and I get the total for those. Okay. So that's the even total, right? So even total is going to be equal to that. All right. So now the odds is going to be a little bit trickier. So what we need to do is uh, have an alphabet uh, basically handy, and we would just get the index of the letter in the alphabet. So I'm just going to go real quick. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Okay. So there's the alphabet. Okay. So if I want to know the index of a given character, I can go alpha dot index and let's say letter A, right? So you're going to get the index zero. Now in the instructions, they tell you that A is actually one. So when we do the, uh, basically the position in the alphabet, we need to add one to the index. So that's going to be the example here. Okay. 
So for the odds, we're going to do this. We're going to go uh, letter for letter in odds, right? So there's all the odd letters. And then we just need to get the position of this letter in the alphabet. So I'm going to go alpha dot index letter plus one, right? So there's all of the positions of the alphabets for the odd letters. So we'll call this uh, odd total is equal to the sum of that list, okay? And so in this case, the odd total was 12. Okay, so now the total uh, uh, fallen, let's do, I don't need to find a replace here. I'm trying to do a variable. So fallen candles, is going to be the even total plus the odd total. Okay, so now we just need to see is it greater than 70% of the original candles uh, in, that came in the function. So we would do something like this, right? And so in this case, it's not, it's 34%. So we would say that there that was close, right? There's no fire here, okay? All right, so we got everything kind of figured out here. This is the solution. Hopefully this is a better visual uh, understanding of what we're doing in the function itself. So what I'm gonna do is just start copying and pasting uh, some of our code here that's gonna work out for us. So we need that, we don't need that, we do need this, okay? Um, and so now I believe that, and we'll merge this there. And then our final thing is to do that test. So I'm gonna cut all this uh, out, bring it over to our function. Okay, so let's see. Right, and so all of that gets indexed uh, or tabbed to the very end there. I need to move all that over, okay? And we'll get rid of some of these extra line breaks here. Uh, so we'll have our odd total. We don't need that line. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, we'll say this. If that is greater than 0.70, right? We're gonna return fire. Otherwise, we'll return that was close. Okay, so let's test this out. See if it works. Looks like we got all the initial tests passing, uh, but when you do an attempt here, you're actually gonna get a failure. And so they actually slipped in an edge case where if you have zero candles, uh, you have a problem here because if candles is zero, you just divide it by zero here, okay? So what we need to do is uh, handle this edge case by up here, I'm gonna say if candles is zero, let's just return that was closed because if there's no candles there's no fire right so that's the uh notion here and so now all tests pass let's do a full submission and boom goes the dynamite